Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kelly. I am an oncology and lymphedema specialist. In a recent video, I shared about new exciting findings on lymphatic drainage and how this may change the traditional way that we have taught how to do it. This research is being done by the ALERT program in Australia, and it very well may change the way we treat lymphedema with lymphatic drainage. To see my explanation of this, I would highly encourage you to go check out that video, which I will link up above and also down below in the description box. And I will also link alert information to learn more in depth below. But in this video, I'm going to do a lymphatic drainage routine for mild arm lymphedema that someone can follow along with based on this information. If you'd like a printout with steps and a diagram, you can find one on my website, which I'll link up above and also in the description box down below. Now, this routine is different than the other videos I have of traditional lymphatic drainage on my channel. And know that this is a modified way that is not yet being taught by lymphedema certification schools to the masses yet. So please continue to work with your lymphedema therapist for personalized guidance. If you want a video of traditional lymphatic drainage, please check out a playlist full of options on my channel, which I'll link down below. Before I begin, I want to take a second and give a massive thank you to the ALERT program, not only for their dedication to this research and passion to improve lymphedema treatment, but also a thank you for providing me with slides and graphics for these videos in this series to share with everyone. Please see the description box down below for any links to the ALERT program content and their publications. Now, I explain this more in depth in the video I mentioned prior, but if we take a quick look at the summary view, you can see here the percentage of individuals that had lymph fluid drain to each area or regions of lymph nodes, with a majority having fluid moving still to the lymph nodes remaining on the side of surgery and up to the clavicle or the collarbone area, and minimal amount moving to the other armpit, and no one had fluid moving down to the groin in this research. So following along for this routine is based on this information and this modification. So we still want to start with our deep breaths. We're going to take our hands and put them on the upper quadrant or upper area of your abdomen. Gently press inwards. Take a nice big deep breath. Feel yourself breathe into your hands. Give a little bit of resistance. So breathe in and out. Move your hands across to the other side, big breath in and out. We'll move our hands out a little bit, another breath in and out. And one more on the last quadrant, breath in and out. Good, next we're going to stimulate the lymph nodes in the area. So we're gonna put our hands right on their collarbone or the base of the neck. You can go opposite, you can go one at a time. If you just have fluid or lymphedema on one side, you can do that. Um, but we're gonna put our hands right on the base of the neck and we're gonna do gentle circles, eight to 10, right in that area. You don't have to press hard, but you wanna make sure that you're using your whole hand to get as much surface area as possible versus just using your fingertips. And when we're done with that, we're gonna do the lymph nodes right around the ear. So what I like to do is take my hands, split them into two with the fingers, and then put those fingers on either side of the ear, and we'll do circles there. Again, try to have your whole hand flat on your neck, I'm doing eight to 10. The direction does not matter. And after we've done that, we're gonna stimulate the lymph nodes in the armpit. So again, if you look at that research, if you have mild lymphedema, we're gonna focus a lot on the side that you had swelling out. So we're gonna, whatever side that might be, hand right in that armpit, and you're gonna do eight to 10 circles right in that area. Again, it doesn't matter what direction you're going. It can be nice and gentle. Maybe you're on the right side, maybe you're on the left, whatever side that you had lymph nodes removed or that you have more of a lymphatic dysfunction. 
Good. And what we're still going to do, we're still going to stimulate the lymph nodes on their side. I think it's always positive to have just lymph node stimulation throughout the body. We won't be focusing on this side. We still want to stimulate the lymph nodes. Now in that research, we had no lymph nodes moving down to the groin. So you're welcome to do some stimulation at the groin, but we're going to go ahead and move on and focus on the areas that they found. So next we're going to do is we're going to go into that chest wall or arm. If someone has breast or chest lymphedema only, I do have separate videos on this, but we're going to still include it with this with the arm. And so again, most of the fluid moved to this area. So if someone has a lot of fluid sitting around this region around the armpit, I'd like to encourage just to start to stimulate the fluid towards those lymph nodes. And you can do gentle strokes. Again, you want to, you want to be on the skin for this video. Obviously I'm not going directly on the skin, but if you can or you're able, you want to do lymphatic drainage directly on the skin. And we're going to just do gentle strokes in those areas that you might have fluid. Now, if you're up upper chest, we can start to move them towards the collarbone or the clavicle area. If you have a lot of fluid sitting underneath, you might want to move that up towards those lymph nodes right in that region. Do about eight to 10 strokes in each area. You can spend more time on areas that you might have more fluid. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna work into the arms. We're gonna start in the shoulder, we're gonna work our way down and then work our way back up. We wanna clear the area first. So starting with the shoulder, kind of up and over towards that lymph node right in the front, that region, or you can kind of come up towards your collarbone. Encourage that fluid moving up and out of the shoulder. So what we also talk about in the other video is that the light, gentle skin stretches that are quick are not as effective if someone has backed up fluid. So we want to do slower, firmer pressure. This isn't a deep massage, but you do want to have just gentle pressure there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the upper arm. So going from the elbow to the shoulder, I like to use the whole hand and then slow, a little bit firmer strokes up the arm. We're going to do about three to five on each side of the arm. Again, you spend more time on an area that you might have more fluid. And we're going to make sure we do all sides of the arm. So three to four on the outside. We're going to the inside. And then we're also going to make sure that we get around the back. Scoop and pull up. Again, we're moving a lot towards the front. If you remember in the picture, not a lot goes to the back. Not a lot of people have flu that moves to the back. We want to make sure that we're going towards the lymph nodes, towards the armpit, and towards the collarbone or clavicle. After we've done the upper arm, make sure that we get around the elbow. Working around the bone, sometimes flu likes to kind of sit in those crevices. So spending time with your fingers a little bit more working around the bones. And then what we're going to do is we're going to work on towards the lower part of the arm or the forearm area, working from the wrist to the elbow. So same thing, full hand, nice and slow, just a little bit firmer pressure, working that fluid down. Now this can be done sitting, it can be done laying down, whatever's most comfortable. I like to have my arm upright like this just to have gravity help. It's not wrong if you have it rested on a table or the arm of a chair for comfort. But after three to four, we're gonna try to go the other side. Slow, firm, and making sure that you're using as much of your hand as possible. And we're doing three to four in each area, but if you have one area that's a little more stubborn, go ahead and spend a little bit more time there. And after we've done three to four strokes or so in each region of the forearm or the lower arm, we're going to move on to the hand. So. A lot of people have tendons that stick out here. If you're having a hard time, you have to be able to feel them. I like to do the whole hand. So hand on the back of the hand, moving that fluid out. 
if again someone has a little bit of fluid just stuck inside in those little crevices, I like to use a little bit more of my fingers to get inside of those crevices between the knuckles, the bones, and then if you have swelling in your fingers, you can also spend time moving the fluid out of the fingers. Some people like to do one finger at a time. That is just fine. Maybe you want to do them all if you don't have as much fluid. Whatever someone may need. Same thing with the thumb and kind of that space right inside the thumb there, inside the crevice there. There's usually a lot of fluid that likes to sit there for some individuals and working through that. And after you've spent as much time as you want on that hand, getting the areas that you need, we're gonna work our way back up the arm to help clear the area. So then we're gonna work back from the wrist to the elbow. Same thing, slow and firm. It's not a deep pressure, but it's not just a light brush anymore. It's, we, we do wanna put a little bit of pressure to get that fluid moving in a backed up area. If someone has healthy lymphatic vessels, again, you can go light and fast, but definitely for areas with swelling, slow and firm. Make sure so that you work around the back side. And after you've spent enough time doing three to four strokes around each area of the forearm or as much time as you'd like. Make sure you go back around the elbow, working around that bone. We also want to work kind of in the inner crease of the elbow. We didn't do that on the way down. Hopefully you spend some time in that region as well. And then we're going to go back to the upper arm. So working slow and firm up the shoulder. Again, you can have your arm raised or be laying down for gravity or resting if that's easier or more comfortable. Make sure that you get the back of the arm. And then also the inside of the arm. And after you've done all sides of the arm three or four times or more, if you'd like, we come back up to the shoulder area, working up and over. And then make sure you get kind of behind that shoulder, kind of upper arm area. There's a little area there that likes to swell, likes to hold fluid, working more towards the armpit, those lymph nodes. Now, after you spend enough time there, you can also spend time up top working some fluid towards the collarbone or clavicle, that upper chest. And then also make sure you spend plenty of time right in that armpit area, working that last little bit of fluid towards the armpit, kind of re-stimulating some of those lymph nodes while we do it. Now, if you have time and you want to spend working all the way across the other side, absolutely, you still have lymph nodes on the inside as well as across that might be pathway for you. But if we're looking at being more efficient with our time, our, the bulk of our focus is right in this armpit and right up by the clavicle or collarbone if someone has just mild lymphedema or lymphatics. If someone has more moderate to severe, we will spend more time going across and down and we'll have that in a separate video. So be sure to check that out on my channel. And after you've spent up as much time as you'd like working that, maybe you have five minutes, maybe you have 10, whatever time that you have working on the area, working on moving that fluid to those regions, then we're gonna finish with our deep breathing. So we're gonna do four more breaths, taking our hand right on our belly, gently pressing inwards, take a nice big breath, feel your belly expand into your hand, but give that resistance. And out. And then move across the other side, breath in. 
and out. Lower quadrant, breath in and out. And then last corner, breath in and out. So that's a modified routine based on the ALERT program's research. Again, I would still follow traditional lymphatic drainage if you have the time, making sure that you can work across, make sure you work in the trunk area. But again, if you only have a few minutes, those are the areas that you wanna focus on. I would first off take out the groin pathways, second take out across, and then focus your time on here. Make sure that you modify your work with your certified lymphedema therapist for a personalized treatment plan. But I hope you all found this video helpful and we'll see you all in the next video. Thanks everyone.